Like Tim Sells here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about something that I did on my last video, which is having training intent. And a person asked a question about whether or not, like, how do you tell, right? And so that's what I'm going to be uh, talking about is what I look for for training intent. All right, so here's the question. Tim, what is the best way to go about finding who has training intent? All right, so I showed this on the last slide, but I did a long version discussion on it uh, on this channel or this uh, YouTube uh, URL right here, or you can probably just link to it up above, all right? So what it basically states is, does with training, in other words, this is a prospect, or I'm sorry, this is a rep, and after following reps for 30 years and figuring out what was the one fundamental that a rep had to have to succeed, and it was training. They had to have the intent to learn, all right? Because if they, <laughs> I'll, I'll walk you through this, but you'll, you'll realize why it's so duh uh, in just a few minutes. All right. So that's what I'm going to walk through here. So. My clues start before they even, like, uh, like when I reach out to them as a lead. And sometimes it's an advertisement that a person is going to click on uh, something and then move over and watch a video or something like that. Okay, so clues from every action or non-action. That's what tells me how much I'm going to really, really focus on this individual. All right. So I start getting clues early. Did they watch all the video? Okay. So how much attention do they have? If they're not, if they don't have attention enough to watch the whole video, um, then it's just a clue. It's all it is at that point. You know, maybe, maybe the kid came in, maybe something, you know, but, but it's just a little clue, little tiny thing right there. Did they fill out the form? Okay, so sometimes they just, you know, request a Zoom meeting or something like that. They didn't fill out a form. All right, maybe, I don't know, they don't know English or something. I don't know. Did they fill out all of the form? Did they leave something blank? Okay, so all of these are these little tiny things that I get clues on along the way. Did they call me back when they say they would? Did they arrive on the Zoom on time? Did they ask for the Zoom recording so they could rehearse what I did in the first meeting? Because if they're really planning on building a business, that, that would have to be what they would be thinking, right? So I remember when I first, I answered an ad and then the person called me back we discussed, he sent me a video, and then at some point in time, I drove up to meet him. It was about an hour drive for me. And I remember when I, get, when I got there, I sat down a tape recorder. Okay, that's because I was already thinking whatever he's doing. I, I want to like really, really like be able to go back and, and, uh, and get it. Okay. Um, what questions are they asking? And I dare say, what questions are they not asking? Right? So this will tell me a whole lot about that person's uh, knowledge, experience, curiosity level. Um, and I have always just felt as though that the people who get the most out of life um, are just really, really curious. Right? Like, they're not shut off to anything. They're just like, huh, never saw that coming or... Or, or whatever it is. It's just, you know, they're just curious people. So um, pipeline questions. Are the questions that they're asking having to do with the process of sales? It's a good indicator to me. Bridge to the pipeline questions. In other words, um, like when I got in, I didn't really have any experience in business whatsoever. And I had no confidence that I could do what was being shown to me. I didn't have confidence in it, but I knew that if I studied it enough, I'd be able to do it. Okay, so I had enough confidence to know that I could know. And that was a video 
like uh, about two back where I talk about that. All right, so bridge to the pipeline has to do with the steps of getting out of your own way so that you can do the pipeline, which the pipeline is the process of every customer acquisition in every industry in the world. And it's not just customers that you think of. It could also be nonprofits. It could be churches and everything else. Okay. Questions about how to sell products. In other words, they're, tr they're drilling down into the product itself. So what products would I be selling? You know, and, and so now they're looking at it and they say, how do you sell this product? You know, and they, they kind of put one in front of me and I tell them how I'd sell that. Okay. So these are really, really good indicators early on. Are they doing the pipeline? So these are questions in pipeline, but this is, are they doing the pipeline? Are they rehearsing, drilling the pipeline? So if they're not doing the pipeline, but they're rehearsing and drilling, fantastic. Exactly. Right? So the last video I did, or the one before I think, it had me, it, it, I was walking through how I set up a stuffed animal on one side of a table and I was talking to the stuffed animal with a tape recorder in front of the stuffed animal so that I knew that I was projecting my voice to it, right? So if I, some people you'll see it on camera and some people you'll see it, you know, like when they're talking to you, their communication is kind of like, and it doesn't quite make it there. It doesn't get there. So that's what uh, I was talking about in that other video. Are they rehearsing drilling the pipeline? Are they calling you giving updates on failures and wins? This right here makes me very happy when it happens. I want people calling me and saying, oh man, I bombed out on this one, man. Uh, oh, what happened, right? So, and I had a win. You know, I got them this far in the pipeline or whatever it is. In other words, I, kn I know the steps. I, you know, like I've done it and I know that there are, Many of those failures along the way. So when I tell you that my numbers were one out of 20, that means I had to talk to 20 prospects and one out of 20, that meant 19 were going to say no to me. And so if I've got somebody and they're not telling me that they're getting no's, I'm kind of like, they're not doing it. They're not doing the pipeline and they're afraid to contact me. Well, that's dumb, right? Like, come on. That, that's what we're here for, right? But there comes a point in time that the person would, would say, okay, so he's given me an assignment to get one prospect across pipeline and I've not done that yet. So it's kind of, hmm, I shouldn't really call him back. Probably true, right? So if you're not willing to move one prospect, there's no business in the world that could survive. You see that? So it's a... Uh, it's a very obvious one. If they're not asking questions, not doing the pipeline, probably. They're probably, they don't have training intent. Okay, so this is kind of like the wrap up. So if they're not asking questions, not doing the pipeline, they probably don't have training intent. Okay, so that's the things that I'm looking for, right? And, and you like, if you've watched all of my videos, I, I lay out in some of them exactly how many statistically that you have to go through before you find somebody who will move quantity of leads across the pipeline. All right. So I reveal all of those numbers exactly like how I build sales teams and everything. So and I'm going to get more and more and more into that as we uh, as we go through here, because we're just getting started on the actual training and learning of the the pipeline itself. OK, so. All right. Not having training intent doesn't mean they never will, all right? So the person who asked this, I'm just gonna speak and, and, and answer you something. It is, this is, we're, we're a volunteer group, right? Everybody volunteers. And so I'm not a boss and I don't believe anybody can't do this or I believe anybody can do this. So that's what I know. Now, it's going to be up to them at some point. I'm willing to really train, but it's gonna be up to them. And I have seen people 
who have been in the industry 30 years and they, they study, they study all the time, they study of this and they go to Tony Robbins and they go to this and they go to that and they go. And so, you know, and they never, they just don't do the pipeline. Okay. And so in other words, they've mastered everything other than what is vital to do. You got to think about that for a minute. All right. So that person literally like would hear me and go feel uncomfortable because they probably know the one thing they should be doing is the one thing they're not doing, but they're doing everything else. And that's why somebody can stand up and say, you know, and they, and they pretend they're a trainer in the industry and they say, yeah, I've been in the network marketing industry for 25 years, you know, and it's like, you know, well, okay. <laughs> uh, being in it is different than doing it. And so now I'm going to talk about this with a new person. I have seen people who show up on the calls, right? The weekly training calls or something like that. They go through private trainings with me. They watch my videos again and again and again, and then suddenly say, I get it now. And then they go out and they sponsor two, three, four people right away. Why? <laughs> because they finally realized that they were just watching instead of doing. And that is, in my opinion, that's what happens in school. You get so used to sitting and watching and taking a test and then sitting and watching, taking a test, and that you never are really training to do. And so that's really what it comes down to for me is I'll give them forever. I will give them forever because I believe that they can do it. I don't believe there's anybody who can do it. So there you go. That's uh, that's kind of the way that I, I see that one. So what's your view on this? How to determine training intent? How do you determine the training intent? How long did it take for you to get it? Are you still not quite there yet, but you're still hanging in there? All right. So please comment down below and then also like, share and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And then also we have a Telegram channel where we can uh, kind of you guys can ask questions and I'll answer questions and then everybody gets to see the answers. And, and then these questions come up on that Telegram channel. And that's the reason that I uh, that I come out here with some of them, uh, but not all of them. So you might think about joining that group. So I appreciate you so much.